This Sunday, May the 8th, is Mother's Day. It should be a really happy day when we celebrate the mothers in our lives and make them feel special. But for my family, it's going to be a really sad day. It'll be exactly a year to the day since we lost Mary, my wife, to depression. You see, depression is an illness. And just like any other serious illness, if you're not careful, it can kill you. So today, I wanna reach out and tell you a little bit about Mary and the journey that I've been on since she died. Why? Well, I'm not an expert. I don't have all the answers. But I do think that by reaching out and talking about depression, we can actually help to save lives. So who was Mary? Well, when we first got together, she was a farmer, proudly farming her own farm. She was bright and vivacious and full of fun. People loved her and she loved people. She was a typical farmer with those attitudes passed down from generation to generation. So she was incredibly independent, practical, resourceful, used to solving problems all by herself. Now that is great if you're up in the middle of the night helping a cow that's having trouble calving. It's not so good if it's you who's up in the middle of the night battling depression and you're not used to asking people for help. Eventually we got married, moved to Auckland, started a family, but we kept the farm. And Mary identified very much as a farmer. You know, she would often walk our dog, a border collie sheepdog, down Ponsonby Road, Auckland's trendiest street, proudly wearing her gumboots. That was Mary. They were good years. They were really happy years. Mary was well. But depression robbed her of that first in 2009, then in 2013, and finally last year. It came on really quickly. All summer, she was well. And then in autumn, it was like a small bird just dropping out of the sky. Now Mary was intensely private about her depression, and she insisted that I was too. But why? Wouldn't you want to tell friends, get help? Well, no, you see, Mary was affected by that stigma around mental illness. She saw it as a weakness. She didn't think that other people would understand and she didn't wanna be judged for that illness. So instead, she masked it, but right under the surface, she felt exhausted, frustrated, isolated and very, very much alone. And over 500 friends who all loved her dearly came to her funeral. Now, shortly after she died, I was due to talk at a farming conference. They were expecting a really light-hearted talk. I was just gonna show some funny ads that I'd made and talk a bit about them. Well, without telling anyone, I decided to totally change the topic. So instead, I talked about the rate of suicide and depression amongst farmers throughout the country. It was really confronting. They weren't expecting it, and I was not expecting the response. In that audience alone, and it was a much smaller audience than this one here today, Five people came up to me afterwards and reached out because they too had lost immediate family members to suicide. And then when the talk went on YouTube, I got calls from farmers around the country, all reaching out to me, all with stories of heartbreak and loss. It was really moving, it was very humbling. I didn't feel equipped to have the right conversations with them. And I kind of felt like I wanted to do more. 
So I trained to become a facilitator for Good Yarn workshops. Now these are workshops aimed at rural communities to give them the tools to talk about mental health. And they're not just aimed at farmers, they're aimed at rural professionals, you know, bankers, insurance advisors, vets, livestock agents, because they're the people that go up the drive every day and talk to farmers. And if we can give them the tools to talk about mental health, then good will come of it. And running those workshops has been an incredibly humbling experience. I've seen big, strong farmers with the courage to reach out and admit that they are battling depression. And it's amazing when they do because the support they get from those workshops is phenomenal. And they find a lot of other like-minded people. I've met farmers who, just like me, have lost their partners to depression. And I have heard some incredible stories about people who have seen the warning signs and courageously stepped in before it's too late and they have saved farmers' lives. And listening to more and more of those stories from the workshops, it's made me realise that it doesn't matter if you're farming on the back blocks, the country, or you're in a block of inner city Auckland apartments. The key to mental health is the same. It's all about reaching out. If you start to feel like you are just on that downward slope, you don't have to cheer up. You sure as hell don't have to harden up. All you need to do is speak up. It's okay to say, I'm not okay. Now I know, because I've seen it, how hard it can be to do that. Depression is a really isolating illness. And the lower you go, the harder it becomes to reach out. But just reach out. Just reach out far enough for someone to be able to grab you. Even if you're in an isolated part of the country where attitudes can still be really, really staunch, there are still amazing people out there ready to help. The Rural Support Network, the Rural Support Trust, is an incredible organisation of mainly retired farmers. They get it, they understand, they won't judge and they will help. As one farmer battling depression said to me, we don't need someone to come up our driveway and give us a solution. We just need someone to come up our driveway and listen. It's all about empathy. So if you see someone else starting to descend on that spiral, you don't need to be a psychologist. All you need to be is empathetic. So how about me? How's my mental health? It's easy to talk about others. It's harder to talk about yourself, isn't it? How's my mental health? Well, I'm lucky because I don't have clinical depression. But coping with the trauma of Mary's suicide had a huge impact on my state of mind. I was fragile. And shortly after, very shortly after Mary died, I had to attend to some of our business affairs. It was the sort of stuff that Mary used to do in our marriage. I hadn't actually paid a bill since about 1995. Did you know you can do it on the internet? <laughs> you heard it here first, right? So I had to quickly sort out some stuff and one of the first things I had to do was pay a very slightly overdue tax bill. It was very small and it was only days overdue. So I rang the tax department and explained to them quite patiently that my wife usually did it and she had just died. 
And what did they say? Oh, okay. And I said, it is not okay. And they went, sorry? And I said, well, that would be a better thing to say. And then they got really confused and they put me through to someone else who had exactly the same conversation with me. So by the time I hung up the phone, I was not a happy man. I was pretty upset. Well, next on my list, I had to ring the insurance company to change the insurance policies over to my name. It's just a formality, right? So a bit upset, actually quite upset, I rang the insurance company. And what did the woman on the phone say? Sure, Matt, absolutely, no worries. We can do that, it's easy. We can sort that out for you now over the phone. But first, can I ask you a question? And I said, sure. And she said, how are you, Matt? Because you must be going through absolute hell right now. And it still brings tears to my eyes telling that story a year on. It was such a beautiful and powerful and simple demonstration of reaching out, of empathy. That's what our Good Yarn workshops are all about, equipping people and encouraging them just to have those skills, the empathy to reach out. So this Sunday, please reach out to all the mothers in your lives. Make them feel loved and cherished, special. And please just spare a moment to think of all the families out there who will be mourning someone that they've lost to depression. I know this Sunday, May the 8th, is going to be a really hard day for my family. And I know that the only way that we're going to get through it is by reaching out. And when we do that, there are going to be a lot of really strong hands ready to catch us. Thank you. God bless.